Hello everyone, my name is Dylan Rambo. I am a PhD student at Northern Illinois University. Today I want to talk to you about global fields and Adele rings. So first, this has nothing to do with the singer. So if you clicked on this video hoping to learn about the singer, sorry. Second, this is my third in a video series on algebraic number theory. So if you haven't watched the first two installments, you might want to do that to remember some of the vocabulary. The links will be in the description. Okay. Before we're able to talk about Adele rings, which is really the main focus of this video, we do need to talk about global fields. If you just Google the phrase global field, you, the definition you might find on Wikipedia or anywhere else, it's probably going to just list what fields qualify as global fields. And then you'd have to read several more paragraphs somewhere to figure out why those particular fields are lumped together. So in the first portion of this video, I want to get a notion of what is a global field, why we bother collecting all of these fields into this collection that we call global fields, and so on. When discussing global fields, it all comes down to how many and what type of absolute values, or we call them places, can you define over a field. We saw in my previous videos that number fields, in particular, for example, the field of rational numbers, Q, you have one place for every prime number. Those are the p-adic absolute values I talked about. And you also have the usual absolute value or place, in which we denote here with the infinity symbol. So every number field that you could ever wish to study it will have only finitely many places lying above each one of these rational places. So, it follows that every number field you could ever wish to study will only have countably many places. And that's an important feature that we want to find. We want to see what other fields exist out there that might also only have countably many places you can define over. For a finite field, the only reasonable absolute value you could ever define over such a field is the trivial absolute value. So not very interesting. We're definitely not going to count finite fields as global fields. For the field of real numbers, or for that matter the complex numbers, the only absolute value you can define there is the usual absolute value, or the complex modulus, if you will. The, any of those p-adic absolute values you certainly can't define for real numbers. You can't define the three-adic absolute value of pi. So those fields only have one non-trivial absolute value that you could define. In fact, that's why we call those local fields, because you only get one useful absolute value. So those won't be global fields. One type of field that is worth considering here, is, though, is a field of rational functions. So something that looks like this. This has a lot of similarities to the field of rational numbers, hence the similar names. You can get an absolute value for this field for every irreducible polynomial, just like you can get a p-adic absolute value in, in Q for every prime. Additionally, you can get an absolute value for the field of rational functions that corresponds with taking degrees of the polynomials, which looks something like this. It should be noted that all of these absolute values for a function field will be non-Archimedean. So when I use that infinity symbol there to describe the uh, absolute value that corresponds with taking degrees, I did not mean to imply that that place is Archimedean. It is not. It still, like all the others, satisfies the strong triangle inequality. I just used that symbol to denote that this place does not correspond to an irreducible polynomial. It corresponds to something different. So these field of rational functions seem to be very similar in properties to the field of rational numbers. So they're going to be what we want to think about when we think about global fields. And just like any number field will be a finite algebraic extension of Q, any general function field we'll call a finite algebraic extension of a field of rational functions. But the question is, what types of fields should we consider for the field of coefficients of a field of rational functions? That's an important question. 
Remember our motivation for wanting to describe a category of global fields. We want to find fields that are similar to number fields. So we still want these function fields to have countably many, but infinite, uh, number of places. So one option that we might consider for the field of coefficients might just be the real numbers or the complex numbers. The real numbers are uncountable. That's a basic fact you would learn in an early advanced calculus course. So any polynomial of this format is going to be irreducible. So for the field of rational functions over R, you're going to have uncountably many irreducible polynomials, uncountably many places. That's not what we want. So we will discount R or any uncountable field as a possibility of being a field of coefficients here. The next possible candidate for the field of coefficients here might be Q, the field of rational numbers. So this field is countable, so we will have only countably many irreducible polynomials over Q. That's a good thing. However, if you remember from my previous video on number fields, you can get an Archimedean place of a number field by looking at each of its embeddings into either the real numbers or the complex numbers. And the same is still going to be true if we think about the field of rational functions over Q. Because of this isomorphism here, we will get a Archimedean place of the field of rational functions over Q for every complex conjugate pair of complex numbers that are transcendental over Q. And there are uncountably many of those. So again, for the field of rational functions over Q, we would have uncountably many Archimedean places. So we're also going to discount Q as a possible field of coefficients that we want to think about. One other thing I'll say here very quickly, but not dive too deeply into, is that in order to define a zeta function for a function field, you kind of want to be able to say that you have only finitely many places of a given degree. And since the field of rational numbers is infinite, you would have an irreducible polynomial of degree one for every rational number, and hence you'd have infinitely many places of degree one. That will cause problems when you try to define a zeta function. I'm not going to say any more about zeta functions because they kind of deserve a video all their own that I might make at a later date. Now let's consider a finite field for the field of coefficients of our function field. It turns out that there are only finitely many irreducible polynomials of each degree over a finite field. So for the field of rational functions over a finite field, there will indeed only be countably many places. So this is what we've been looking for. Another nice things about the field of rational functions or any function field over a finite field is that you can have a product formula for, the, for number fields, the product formula looks something like this. The function field version is very similar. And that's another important feature that we want global fields to have. The whole idea behind a global field is basically a field over which we can do number theory. And so obviously number fields serve for that purpose. And so too do these function fields over a finite field. A local field then, as opposed to a global field, a local field is the topological completion of a global field at any one of its places. So, so much like R is a local field because it's the topological completion of Q at the usual absolute value, uh, any you can have a topologically completed field uh, from a function field for any of its places as well. Another important fact about these local fields is that all of them will be locally compact. And that's an important feature we would like to have. If you took a topological completion of some of those other fields that we rejected as being global fields and took a topological completion there, 
it's not guaranteed that that field you get would be locally compact. So locally compact is an important feature we like to keep. Now that we've had this discussion about global fields, we can now talk about the Adele ring, which was the original purpose for this video. So we're going to start for function fields because the Adele ring there is actually a little bit nicer. We'll talk about number fields in a little bit. For a function field, this here is how we will define the Adele ring. Now that I'm, I see that that's a mouthful, let's unpack it. So first off, notice that it's a subring of the full direct product of all the local fields KV. Hopefully that's at least clear. So every Adele, every element of the Adele ring, will be a infinite tuple with one entry coming from each local field. However, there's a caveat here. The caveat is that the entries in that tuple have to come from the unit ball almost everywhere. That's what AE stands for. And in this context, almost everywhere just means for all but finitely many places. For a number field, we have to do something slightly different, and that's because number fields have Archimedean places, whereas function fields do not. In an Archimedean local field, the unit ball is not a subring. The unit ball in R is not a subring of R. This is not. So for a Archimedean for a number field, the Adele ring looks something like this. For all of the Archimedean places, we don't bother thinking about a subring, we just take the full local field. And for a all of the non-Archimedean places, we still have the restricted product that we saw for function fields. So the Adele ring is indeed a ring. Its addition and multiplication are both done component-wise. So do realize the Adele ring will have lots of zero divisors there. So there aren't people, there aren't a lot of mathematicians who study the internal structure of Adele rings as far as their ideals and stuff. Not particularly interesting. The Adele ring is interesting for a lot of other more important reasons. In particular, it's a topological ring. The topology we put on it is something called the restricted product topology, which you can do in a lot more general situations than this thing with global and local fields. The last thing I want to talk about is hopefully an answer to a question that you're thinking. Why do we take this bizarre restricted product rather than the full direct product. The basic answer to that is the full product is too big. With this restricted product topology, the Adele ring is also locally compact. Like I said before, that's an important property we wish to preserve. The full direct product with the product topology is not locally compact. It's just too big. And so all of these wonderful things that we can do in the Adele ring, such as all of these here, we can do those because of the local compactness. Without, when, you, when you take that away, you lose the ability to do all of those, at least in as nice a way as we do. Right. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you'd like to record a video for us, please do send us an email. If you have a suggestion of a topic we, you'd like us to cover, please let, leave that in the comments. And if not, if you want to just keep watching and learning, remember to click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and thank you for learning.